All right, well, welcome to The Resistance. I'm so glad that you've tuned in tonight. And I truly believe that it's not by accident, but God has an appointment with you. He wants to do something fresh in your life. He's got a word for you tonight. God's put a word in me and it's burning and I'm fired up. I can't wait to share that with you a little bit later, but we've got a lot to show you tonight on the program. We're going to be going to Sri Lanka to show you what God used us to do there as the hand of God was in action. It was powerful. We've got some testimonies and, and a little moment of me getting the chance to preach in a house church. It was exciting. You're not going to want to miss it. We've also got Bill Johnson, a, a continuation of the interview with him on the program tonight. And BJ and Lisa Sullivan are back in the studio to lead worship. They're just bringing the presence of God right in here. And I know it's coming right across that screen into wherever you're sitting right now. God wants to overwhelm you tonight with his glory, with his presence. He wants to minister to your spirit tonight. I know a lot of us are going through tough times. And I hold in my hands your prayer requests, your needs that have been coming in from all over the world. I know that we're going through tough times and I want to take time to minister to you tonight. Because I'm crazy enough to believe that the God that I serve can do a miracle right through your phone, right through your computer, right through your television set. He can bring you the breakthrough. He can heal your body. He can restore relationships. He can set you free from addiction tonight. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, nothing is too big from God. And I've got your prayer request here. And I want to ask you tonight, if you need a breakthrough, if you need a miracle in your life, then send me your prayer request right now. You can do it on Facebook, on Twitter. You can also send me your prayer requests at info at bensorello.com at our website. Get them into me because before we go off the air tonight, we're going to pray. We're going to touch and agree according to God's word, not the opinion or the theory of man, but according to God's word. And God is going to honor his word tonight. God's going to give you breakthrough tonight. I don't know if you're as excited as I am, but I'm excited because Jesus is coming and I can feel the urgency in the atmosphere. God is raising up a new generation and that's what, the new, uh, th that's what this program, The Resistance, is all about. It's building God an army. You're part of that army. I just want to thank all of you for watching tonight. Thank all of my friends all around the world who are tuning in. Those of you who have signed up to be part of The Resistance, thank you. We couldn't do it without you. We're starting a movement. We're here to release revival throughout the nations of the world. And you're part of that. God is counting on you. You're part of his plan. You're part of God's dream. But right now, before we go too much further, I want to take time to worship God. Because worship, it, it ushers in the presence of God. It, it changes the atmosphere sometimes. And so wherever you're at right now tonight, join with us. Don't be a spectator. Just open up your spirit right now. And just begin to worship God with us as we go after him. Because that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go after him. So you go after him at home. We're going to go after him here. Let's get ready to worship the Lord with uh, BJ and Lisa Sullivan. of who you are and all we have is for you I don't want it anymore and all we want is from you well, I could not ask for has overcome and 
every part of who we are and all we have is for you Jesus I don't want it anymore and all we want is from you but I could not ask for more Amen. Amen. There's nothing like getting to worship the Lord. That was powerful. Thanks, guys. Man, tell me, what, what's God telling you lately? Man, God's had us in this place as, as worship leaders and even as parents to, to two young kids, um, just, try, just showing us how to live a, a lifestyle of worship, yeah. more than just a Sunday morning or a, a Wednesday night or a Thursday night, but just how to, how to live a life where worship just becomes a part of, of everything you do, where the underlining thing behind everything you do is just a, a worship and, and adoration. And yeah. you know, the Word of God says that His presence, it dwells in our praises. Yes, Man, when we live a lifestyle of worship, man, even our presence, you know, uh, it, when it becomes God's presence, man, people's lives are changed, yeah. people's sicknesses are healed, just even within general conversation, yeah. you know? And so he just had us in that place of showing us how to live a lifestyle yeah. of worship. Amen, amen. Well, man, I want to just thank you guys again for being here, for being part of what God's doing with the resistance and uh, God's hands on you, his anointings on you, and I'm excited. And, you know, if you're watching right now and you want to find out how you can get their music and find out more about BJ and Lisa Sullivan, you can check out the website and uh, find out more about them, help support what God's doing in them. And man, God is up to stuff all over the world through everybody that's watching right now. God wants to do things in your life. God wants to speak to you and he wants to speak through you. God wants to use you. God wants you to carry his presence, that we're to be carriers of his presence, that, that while we walk this earth, we are living in a natural world, but we're not from this world. We're from another place. We are designed and crafted by God Almighty himself. Jesus even said, he said, Father, even as I am not of the world, neither are these of the world. Before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. God has a plan for you. God wants to use you. 
And I've got a word for you tonight I'm going to share with you about the authority of God's word. Because there's an unfortunate circumstance that the body of Christ is facing today. We are following our emotions and we're following our feelings and we have lost touch and we're biblically illiterate today in the body of Christ and we've got to know God's word if we're going to be able to weather the storm that's coming upon the world and upon the body of Christ. We've got to be able to weather it and stand up with victory. And the only way we can do that is by knowing God's word, the authority of his word. And I want to share that with you a little bit more in just a few moments. But I've got a continuation here of an interview we've been sharing over the last few weeks that I had the opportunity and the privilege to sit with the man of God, Bill Johnson. He's got a tremendous work that God's doing out in Redding, California, using them and their, their uh, church all over the nations of the world. And I had the opportunity to sit and just to, just we got to share our hearts and get to talk. And so I want you to take a look at this real quick. To me, he's the key, the source. Yeah, he's yeah, the fuel absolutely. to the fire. He's what what was in the lampstand that caused the fire to burn. And, uh, you know, to me, traveling around, I see, uh, you know, Miles Monroe, I think, wrote a book, He's the Most Important Person on Earth. And yeah. uh, he is the most important person on Earth. How do you see him um, playing a role, and where do you see? Because to me, I think part of the demise of, our, of the church being able to walk in the power, the destiny as a whole body, as, a, as I believe they were when God gave birth in the upper room that day, um, you know, People aren't willing to let the Holy Spirit be free. We're maybe afraid of going too far. Uh, maybe we've been burned. Maybe we've seen weird things. How would you speak to that? Because I believe that until we get him back on his, in his rightful place, the seat of honor, well, we're never going to see the break. That we're just going to go through the motions, and it's going to be a dead religion, and it's going to destroy uh, people, lives, churches, families. A born-again believer has Christ's nature in them. So when we minister to folks, we assume they want the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so we speak to that part. Most people don't walk in it because they don't know how. There's not a model. Right. They get a sermon, but not an example. Right. And it's a, there's a difference between living out of principle and living out of presence. Mm -hmm. I can teach people principles of health, healing, principles of, of economics, and I can get people to prosper because they do the right principles. Mm -hmm. I can teach people how to lay hands on the sick, pray a certain way, and watch people get healed. And it's not that there's not success there. The kingdom is a kingdom of principle. Mm -hmm. But we're supposed to learn how to live by the presence. Jesus only did what he saw his father do. He only said what he heard his father say. It had to do with the, <clears throat> the dove that rested on him mm -hmm. and remained. Right. It was that presence that he lived from. <clears throat> and if we, a lot of our problem is, is we, is the church lacks examples in leadership on how to live out of the presence. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, everything is so well orchestrated because we, because of our understanding, right. because of our commitment to principles which are right, um, we, we sometimes reduce the Christian life to these five steps and you get this outcome. Mm -hmm. And it just works against uh, the relational aspect of, of really being presence driven, yeah. being a people that carry presence and and this may be the right thing to do, but in this moment he's having me do this. You right. know, I mean, in, you know, in a, in any given meeting, if you're if you're being led by the Holy Spirit in a meeting, you may have a great plan that worked wonderful yesterday. Yeah. But he shows up; he wants to do it different, and and it's not even that you won't have something good happen if you follow just the principle of how it worked yesterday. It's just it, it, the real breakthrough comes because we honor him and we give him place. Yeah. And I think people want that. I just think they, they lack the example. Yeah, a lot you know? of people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. <coughs> and like you said, they don't have the example of, of who to look to, how to follow it, and how to get into his presence because there's nothing like it. You know, you can't really articulate it. You can't really explain it. It's, it's something you have to experience. And mm -hmm. sure. you know, I believe the most important thing with God is that experience with God and the experience we have because no one can take it. It's that intimacy between you and Him. Yeah. You know, what would you say to those people who they want it, they follow the <clears throat> principles, they're hungry? How do they find that place of His presence? How do they unlock that in their life? What's, what's the thing they need to do to be able to get there? Worship. When in doubt, worship. Mm -hmm. Learn to discover the presence by ministering to Him. Yeah. Always learn to learn to host that presence because of an affection. You know, I, I, every night I, uh, when I go to sleep, I just I turn my heart's affection towards the Holy Spirit, 
And in that moment of encounter, that's where I, I go into a place of rest and that's how I go to sleep. Yeah. It's learning to host the presence, not when there's ministry to be done. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a relationship. It's not, it's not a connection so that I can be successful. Yeah. It's a, it's a relationship. So right. that's what you do. And so you, you pay attention to the presence. You take time during the day just to honor and to recognize that he is, he is upon me. He is with me. And it's, it's not connected to something I have to do. Exactly. And, uh, and as you do that, you, you start awakening our sensitivities to that person, to his voice, mm -hmm. his presence. You know, uh, Hebrews says that we're to have our senses trained to discern good and evil. Well, that's an abstract thought in Western culture because we're, we're very uh, reason oriented, mm -hmm. but he wants us even down to the physical body to be able to recognize when the anointing of God just increased in the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, that may be abstract to our experience, but it's not abstract in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so we have to adjust how we live, how, what we do with this presence and how we respond to them, you know? Yeah. And so you teach people that sort of thing. You teach what it means to just take a five minute vacation and just, and just sit there and let the Lord just fall upon you in his love and touch you and learn to recalibrate the affections of our heart, mm -hmm. recalibrate the value of our senses that every one of us were created, designed by God to be able to recognize him. Yeah. And, uh, and so it just becomes practical. If you can get it in that context, when there's no ministry involved, mm -hmm you're much more likely to function out of that when there's ministry. Open me up, pour me out Like an ocean you surround I need to be lost inside of you and all these words are not enough but I know I know you're all that matters beauty beyond comprehension you take me somewhere beyond my intention to the place where I'm broken by love and oh these words are not
poured out you gave willingly now i'm standing here at the foot of your tree place where redemption is found words are not enough, but I know, I know you're all that matters. Man, God is good. He is all that matters. Sometimes you know, I think it's hard in our lives. We get so caught up with everything that's going on around us and we miss those moments that God wants to have with us. You know, God wants to have a moment with you watching right now where you, you can have an encounter with Him. We get so busy sometimes, I, I forget to take the time I need to. And I miss those moments sometimes. I don't want to miss those moments with God. God, God has appointments with you. He wants to just sit and hang out. He wants to hear what's on your heart, the good things, the bad things. He wants to know your dreams. He wants to give you direction and guidance. Don't miss the moments God has. Learn how to, to grab hold of those, to get intimate with Him, to spend time with Him, to worship Him. You know, I believe that God has a moment with you right now. God wants to empower your life. God wants to teach you something so that when you stand out on the front lines, you don't just stand there in your own strength but you stand there knowing who you are and knowing what you possess because inside of you is something far greater than money could ever buy, far greater than words could ever articulate. Inside you is a treasure and it's wrapped up in this earthen vessel as the scripture says. And the King of glory, he dwells within you, the Spirit of God. The Bible says it's the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. He dwells in you also. I think sometimes we read the scriptures and we read the stories about Jesus and, and about the disciples and we hear about the great men and women of God and the things that they've done and we never really think that we could ever do the same things because maybe they had something special that we didn't have. But when you study the word, and this isn't what I was going to preach tonight, but when you study the word and you look at the life of Jesus and you realize that when the master left heaven and he stepped out of eternity and he stepped onto planet earth he couldn't do any miracles he came as a man the scripture says that he humbled himself and he made himself of no reputation he put on flesh and blood and he came as a man why because only man has the legal right to rule the world I don't have time to unpack it all tonight, but you go study it. You go find it. He came as a man and he left his glory behind to show us the way. And it was that moment when he came to John in the Jordan River as he was baptizing people that everything changed in the life of Jesus. He was showing us the way to go. He was showing us how to walk. Jesus said, if you believe in me, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also because I go to my father. What did he mean by that when he said, because I go to my father? He, he was trying to tell us something. It was the secret. Because I go to my father now, I can hook you up. I can give you the same thing that gave me the ability to open the eyes of the blind, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. It was the spirit of God. Because as he was baptized and as the spirit of God, as you heard in that interview, he descended upon Jesus and remained. Everything changed. His name changed. They stopped calling him Jesus of Nazareth. And they started calling him Jesus the Christ. They stopped recognizing him for who he was. And they, started rec they stopped recognizing him from where he came from and started recognizing him for who he was, who he is. He is the Christ, the anointed one. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all those oppressed of the devil. It was the anointing. It was the Spirit of God baptizing him. It was the Holy Ghost inside of him that gave him the ability. And my friends watching tonight, there's not two Holy Spirits. There's one. There's one Spirit of God. And he is the same one that raised our Lord and Savior from the dead. The same one who gave him the ability 
to work miracles. He is the same one that lives inside of you. And he's waiting to do great things in your life. He's waiting for you to step out in faith and just trust him. Just believe. That's all we've got to do. If we do the believing, God will do the manifesting. It's our job to believe. It's our job to stand. But what do we stand on? We stand on God's word, God's principles, God's promises. Why? Because his word is so important to us. The authority of God's word is the greatest power in all the world. It's not military power. The greatest power in all the world, it's not economic power. It's, it's not nuclear power. It's not governmental power. The greatest power in the world is the word of the living God. Why? Because God is a man of his word, a God of his word. He says what he means and he means what he says. He doesn't flippantly use language. But when he speaks, he speaks purpose. He speaks life. He releases creative power. When God speaks, all of creation stands at attention, ready to do his will. When God begins to speak, the wind begins to blow from the north, the south, the east, and the west. All of creation, the trees, the grass, the lilies of the field, they stand at attention, ready to do his will. Because God is the God of the universe, the creator of every good and perfect thing. And how did he do it? He spoke it. When God wants something done, he speaks. God speaks and things happen. God can't lie. He's not like you and me, the scripture says. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he needs to repent. Has he not said it? And so shall he not bring it to pass. You see, when God speaks, things happen. If God tried to lie, it would come to pass. If God said elephants could fly, they would start flying. When God speaks, creation has to obey. And if we don't know God's word, we'll never be able to stand. You know, as I was coming out of my dressing room tonight, God spoke to me and he said, stop. He said, I want you to sit, share something with my people. He said to be prepared for the coming storm. Be prepared. Loving me is not enough. My word will sustain you, the Lord says. My word will will guide you. To know me is to know my word. To love me is to embrace my word. God wants us to embrace his word because you can love him all you want, but yet when the trials of life come, you're not going to be able to stand. Why? Because it's his word that is our foundation. What does the scripture say in Matthew 7? Matthew 7 in chapter 24, it talks about the a parable, a story that Jesus was sharing with us about the wise man who built his house upon the rock. And it says that whoever hears these sayings of mine and who does them, he, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon the rocks, or upon the rock. And when the rains descended and when the floods came and when the winds blow and they beat upon that house, it did not fall. Why? Because it was founded on the rock. God's word is our foundation. You know, faith without the word, it doesn't work together because the word of God is the anchor for our faith. If we're going to cast the anchor of faith to hold on to something, it can hold on to nothing but God's word. And if you don't know what God's word is, you're going to be deceived. Your emotions are going to begin to lead you. They're going to begin to guide you into places God never intended for you to go. Why? Because it felt good at the time. You began to believe what you saw. You began to believe the things you heard. And it began to move you. A mighty man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, he made this statement. He said, I do not allow my feelings to move me, but what I believe moves me. What he believed was God's word. He was a man of God. In fact, in his house and in his home, he wouldn't allow no newspapers, no magazines. Only the word of God. He knew God's word because God's word will sustain us through those tough times. It's his promises. It's what we have to do to stand on. The scripture says after we've done everything, after we've done spiritual warfare, prayed in the Holy Ghost, sought counsel, after we've done all we know to do, the only thing we have left is to stand. And we don't stand on what we feel. We stand on God's word and God's promises. And so I challenge you to know God's word, to discover God through his word. Because he's not a man that he would lie. He's not the son of man. He's not like us. He doesn't need to repent for those things. Has he not spoken it? And so shall he not bring it to pass. My friends, 
God is alive and he is who he claims to be. He's not a liar. He is the God of the universe. And when he speaks, things happen. You know, I don't have time to share all this with you tonight. But I just want you to receive a breakthrough. I'm, I'm going to pray for you before the program's over tonight. I want to stir up what God's put inside you, that you will go after God's word, that when you begin to read it, it will come alive to you, that you'll begin to see things that you never saw before so that you can do things you've never done before because it's through God's word and, and the coming alive when God begins to breathe on it. You know, you can read something over and over, but all of a sudden there comes that moment where you saw something you never saw before and your eyes are opened. You have a revelation. That which was hidden has now been revealed and you can see what you couldn't see before. And all of a sudden now that verse is alive to you. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You can know that till you're blue in the face. You can say it over and over. But something happens when that scripture comes alive to you that when you stand and you look the devil in the face, you're not afraid anymore. Because you know that you know that scripture is not just words on a page, but it is reality. And the devil has to obey the God inside of you. God wants to put you on the front lines in front of some people who are hurting, who are broken. But you can't give what you don't have. And God wants you to get something tonight. God wants you to receive a fresh anointing. He wants you to get into his word and not just read it, but begin to eat it. Because it's not just an entertaining story, but it's nourishment for our souls. It will lead us. King David, you know, in Psalms, the 119th chapter, he begins to talk about God's word and, and about many powerful things. But he says in Psalms 119, 11, your word I have hidden upon my heart. You've got to hide God's word in your heart. He says in 119 and 50, he said, your word has given me life. If you're going through a tough time, God's word will give you life. It will sustain you through what you're going through. Verse 119 and 105, it says that your word is a lamp unto my feet. If you need guidance, get into God's word. You know his nature. You want to know if it's God or the devil talking to you, get into God's word. Because God's word will always be verified with what he's spoken already. He's not going to speak to you something new that you can't find in the scriptures He's not going to tell you to do something that he's not already revealed through his character and his nature in the word of God. God is a God of order. God is a God of purpose. And God is a purpose for his word. Why did he send his word? 1 John 3, 8, For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, God, is he doesn't just do things for the sake of doing things. God's on purpose. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We've got to understand the purpose of why God sent us his word because in the beginning was the word. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was with him in the beginning and without him was not anything made that was made. In the 14th verse of the first chapter of John, it says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God sent us his word. He was in the beginning with God. He was God. And without him was not anything made that was made. And why did he become flesh to dwell among us? That he might destroy the works of the devil. See, Jesus is that word. He is the word made flesh. And he was sent here. Not just to wound the devil, not just to play games with Satan, but to destroy his kingdom, to de take back what he stole from God. God's word is everlasting. It stands forever. The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. You know what happens when everything starts shaking and crumbling? God's word will stand through the midst of the greatest earthquakes and tsunamis and hurricanes, tornadoes. God's word will still stand. When the world comes against you, when the wind and the waves and the trials come, God's word will cause you to stand. And when it comes and it beats down and it beats down hard, and when you're ready to give up, God's word will give you something to rest on, something to lean on, something to pull yourself up on. God wants to speak in your life tonight, my friend. God has a word for you. 
God has something for you to hold on to so that when everything falls apart, you've got that word. You see, you need your own word from God so that when people try to discourage you, even in the church, when you start going after it, and they start calling you crazy, they start calling you a fanatic, that you don't need to go that far. You don't need to pray that hard. You don't need to fast like that. You can just coast on by. You can hold on to the word that God has put something in you far greater than they can ever imagine. God wants to blow your mind with the word that he's put inside you, and it's waiting to get out. And the word God's given you, he hasn't given to anybody else. He's given you something to speak. He's given you a territory to go into and to claim a harvest field that belongs to you, my friend. But you got to know God's word. Don't be like the people who get swayed with every wind and doctrine that comes blowing by and they get into weird stuff. They start acting stupid and crazy. And they start doing things that cause the world to look at us like, who are those crazy people? And I know the scripture says we are a peculiar people. We are different because we're not from this world. But God's not weird. God is a God of order. I believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I believe in prophecy, speaking in tongues, casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick. But you don't get weird if you stay in God's word. You may do things you don't understand, but you're not going to get whacked out. You're not going to get weird. You're not going to start believing in stuff that's not scripturally sound. You're not going to start lifting up angels more than God. You're not going to start looking for the prophetic so much that you tap into a spirit of divination. You're going to dive into God's word and you're going to rest on it because it will sustain you. It sustained Jesus in the wilderness when Satan came against him. When the devil himself came to Jesus, what did he do? As they were up on that mountaintop together, the enemy tried to use the word against Jesus. He tried to say, Jesus, it is written. He tried to pervert the word of God. Why? Because he's a manipulator. He's a liar. He's a counterfeit and a deceiver. And the devil knows the word, unfortunately, better than probably 90% of Christians today. And he'll take a truth and twist it just enough to get you tweaked out and chasing, chasing your tail, running in circles, going around the mountain. My friends, we've got to go after it. We've got to know God's word. I'm going to pray for you in just a few moments. Right now, I want to go to, a, to Sri Lanka to take you and show you what God began to use us to do there. We had a powerful time. In fact, the government tried to throw us out of the country. They shut down our meetings. We'd move it. They'd shut it down. The Buddhists tried to rally against us, but God's word prevailed. And we preached the gospel. And it wasn't exactly like I thought it was going to be when we went. But we released God's word in that nation. And here's a clip from one of the leaders there talking about our visit. Take a look at this. Well, you know, we have just coming out of a post-war uh, situation in Sri Lanka. Last 30 years, uh, since I was a kid, uh, you know, Sri Lanka has been in a civil, bloody civil war, I would say. And uh, this year, I mean, uh, this year in May, we came out of it, and uh, no more terrorism in terms of war, and guns are silenced. But I must say that people have seen a lot here. It is almost like sometimes uh, you are immune to it. Uh, bombs and suicide has become a day-to-day -day life in this country for the last 30 years. But God's grace has been on the island, and I think uh, with God's grace, with a lot of godly people, a lot of people who uh, had a burden for Sri Lanka, not only from here, but from outside Sri Lanka. Prayers, prayer warriors that have been coming up in the last 10 years, 20 years, have really changed the spiritual atmosphere in Sri Lanka to give the breakthrough uh, of the war. I think it was a wise decision for us to get together and pray, uh, Ben and his team and uh, the team from Dilhan, and all of us been there. I think that it released, uh, it broke certain spiritual strongholds. It released something to the atmosphere. Personally, I was part of the prayer, uh, and and we felt in our spirit that uh, you know uh, boldness came into us. You know, stand up for God, stand up for the truth, uh, and, and certain we felt that there was a release of yeah, the joy of the Lord, the, the peace of the Lord that came. That whatever happens that we know the end is going to be good. 
we feel that Sri Lanka is going to play a major role in the end time work. Uh, let it be spreading the word or missions, whatever it may be, it could be revealed. Sri Lanka is looking at young, dynamic, new thinking coming into the country because we have a big young population who went through a lot in the last 30 years. So this is the time uh, for, for the younger generation to rise, a new generation for God. Man, what a powerful time we had in Sri Lanka. I remember we came there from Dubai. We had ministered in Dubai in the Middle East and we flew into Sri Lanka and we were expecting this big crusade. They had been promoting it. They had passed out over a half a million handbills, expecting a lot of people to come to Jesus. And as we came, and actually before we came, the enemy, see, he knew we were gonna be there. We, we intimidated him. The principalities and the powers rose up and they started to try to war against us. And God taught me a powerful truth as I was in that nation because I was in my room praying as we got there and as they had canceled the meeting and we moved it to another location. The government got involved. The Buddhists were ready to burn themselves at the stake right there in front of us in a protest against the meetings. And, and as we came and I was in my room praying, God said, I didn't need you to stand up and have a big crusade. I just needed you to put your feet on the ground. And I needed you to speak my word in this nation. And I needed you to release as my prophet my word because my word will not return to me void. And I sent you there to put your feet on the ground as my servant and to begin to speak. And so that's what we did. And we preached in a house. They had been praying that they had a dream. The woman had a dream that we would, that somebody was going to be ministering in her home, that she was going to open her home up for the gospel. And we began to preach. We were the first ones to go there and to begin to speak the gospel in her home. The power of God moved. Uh, churches opened up. We began to travel around. And we preached the gospel and lives were changed. And we didn't just preach a nice message. We released a word from heaven, a sound that's echoing through that nation. See, the devil's afraid of what's inside of you. If you just really could get a hold of what God has inside of you, my friend, it would blow your mind that you could stand and you can face principalities and powers. And you can take authority over situations and circumstances and you can speak to nations. You have something inside of you that is so great that you can speak to nations. You can speak to your nation, those of you watching here in America. You can speak to your nation, those of you watching in Europe, those of you watching in Africa, the Middle East and Asia, those of you watching all around the world in South America, you can speak to your nation a word from heaven. You've got to get into God's word. You've got to rest on him and you've got to begin to speak it. You've got to defend it. When people try to rise up against it, you can't just say this is a nice story, but no, you've got to be firmly persuaded that this is the very breath of God spoken and inspired through the spirit of the living God for man to write and for us to take and to run with that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached through all the world for a sign and a wonder and then the end shall come. Jesus is coming. And listen to what God said, Isaiah 55, 11. It's one of my favorite scriptures. So shall my word be, God said, that I send forth from my mouth. It will not return unto me void but it will accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. <laughs> so shall my word be, says the Lord, that I send forth from my mouth. He will not return unto me void, but he shall accomplish what I please and prosper where I sent it. What does that mean? God sent his word. God sent his son and he didn't return unto him void, but he accomplished it. It's finished. It's done. Jesus did it. The blood of the lamb paid the price. And God is your God. And he wants to do something in your life fresh. He wants to do something in your life that will change you, that will give you the ability to do what you could never do before. God wants to anoint you. God wants to anoint the word inside you. God wants you to be able to read his word and begin to understand it, to begin to devour it, begin to not let go of it until you get it until you have something that you can use. You can't give what you don't have. So you've got to begin to eat it until all of a sudden it comes alive to you. It's your time. Those of you watching right now, I'm just going to pray for you. 
that God would stir up his word inside you. Just lay your hands on your belly right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up those watching to you right now and I speak into their destiny. I speak to the word that you have inside them and I say, be awakened, be quickened within them in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, stir them up right now. Mighty God, breathe upon them a fresh anointing, a fresh fire, a hunger and a desperation to know your word. Father, I pray for a burden to rise up inside them for your word, a burden to carry your word, a burden to devour your word. Rise up inside them in the name of Jesus right now. Overwhelm them right now, mighty God, with the destiny that you have inside them. In Jesus' mighty name, I can feel the Holy Ghost. I can feel the presence of God. I'm not here to have a cool show. I'm not here to go through the motions. God put me here on an assignment to loose, loose something into your life, to release a new anointing. And you're not watching tonight by accident, my friend. God has something for you that he wants to do new and fresh in your life. He wants to take you places you've never dreamed you could go. He wants to awaken desires and dreams inside you that he placed there before the foundation of the world. It's your time. I'm going to pray for those of you who need a miracle tonight, those of you who need a breakthrough. I want to challenge you right now. If you know someone who needs a miracle, call them on the phone right now. Tell them to tune into the website, into the broadcast. We're going to pray. Send me your prayer requests. Because before we go off the air tonight, we're going to pray. We're going to go after it. And I believe God is going to do a miracle for you tonight. Not tomorrow, but tonight. Because the God that I serve is able. And his word, he spoke it. He said, I sent my word and I healed you and delivered you from all your destructions. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all your iniquities and he heals your diseases. Tonight, miracles are going to happen. Email me your prayer requests at our website. Send them on Facebook, on Twitter. Right now, I want to take you back to Sri Lanka into this service. We preached in a home as the power of God began to move. Take a look at this. We did hardly any advertising, so it was just word of mouth. And uh, we announced it only about a week and a half ago. So what, you, what we saw here really was the work of the Holy Spirit. Your breakthrough is here tonight. If you cry out to God, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. Your dreams, your desires are coming to pass. God is establishing you. So press into your breakthrough. You know, Bartimaeus was a blind man. And he knew that Jesus was walking by. And he knew that if he wanted his miracle, he was going to have to do something different. You see, he wasn't the only blind man. But he was the only one who did something different. He stepped out of his comfort zone and he started to cry out to God. The master was walking by. And tonight, the master is walking by. And Bartimaeus started shouting, Jesus! Jesus! Until something happened. Until Jesus stopped. And he said, what do you want? But before that happened, people said, Bartimaeus, what are you doing? You're acting foolish. You're being crazy. You need to shut up, Bartimaeus. But he said, no, I will not be quiet, but I want to receive my sight. So he got a little louder. He got a little bit crazy. He did something he'd never done before. And he, from the inside, the innermost part of his being, he started saying, Jesus, I won't let you pass me by. Jesus, I won't let you pass until you touch me. And Jesus stopped and he said, what do you want? He said, that I might receive my sight. He said, son, go your way. See, tonight God is touching you. Don't let him pass you by. Do something you've never done before from inside of you. Let your deep cry out to him. Say, Jesus, I won't let you go until you touch me. Tonight is my night. Receive your breakthrough. I believe when he has given us the best we need to give the best in return. And the Lord has spoken to me many times uh, in giving me a direction to open my home for His glory, for His anointed servants to come and to preach the gospel to uttermost parts of the earth. And truly, today it has been that. The words He has given me, the promises He has 
spoken to me has come to pass today because truly God has brought his anointed servant to this home and he has filled this place in this presence and I just could see the hand of God upon every person and I just thank the Lord because this is a victory because I want my family to serve the Lord and to just show God's love and his power to all people who are gathered here. So I just glorify the name of the Lord. And God is amazing. God blows my mind. It's so encouraging to go and as I travel the nations of the world to see the hunger that people have. As we stepped in that nation right after they came out of a civil war, God sent us to many nations after they've been out of war to minister the gospel, to release his kingdom. God's sending us through the Hope Alive crusades that we hold around the world, seeing tens of thousands of people come to know Jesus Christ. Bodies healed, people set free through our fresh fire meetings, through our pastor's training meetings. And we can't do those things without people like you. People who will stand with us, who will stand with Ben Sorella Ministries, who will stand with the resistance and support what God is doing through the nations of the world. God's got a call on our lives to go and to preach the gospel and to build God an army. And that's what we're doing. We're putting our lives on the line. Many times we are in nations that they persecute Christians. But we're going where God is opening doors, where God is sending us. And I'm asking you, will you stand with us? Will you support what God is doing here through the ministry? Will you join with us with this resistance movement that God is raising up? Those of you watching right now, I'm asking you to make a sacrifice. As we're sacrificing our lives to stand with us in sacrifice on the front lines. Maybe you can't go in person, but you can through your gifts, through your financial contributions by buying the CD that we have on the website, The Awakening, or the, our DVD, Hope, Ta uh, Hope uh, Restored in Freetown. You can help support the movement. I'm asking those watching right now to step out in faith and to support us monthly. Those of you watching who can give a dollar a day, $30 a month, to stand with us, it's not much, but to become a monthly contributor, to help us preach the gospel, for souls, because that's what it's about. It's not about building up our reputation. It's about the kingdom. If you can't do a dollar a day, then do 50 cents. Give $15 a month. If you can't do it every month, do it one time. Do it as the Lord has led you. Many of you can do more. Maybe you could do a one-time $100 gift, 500. Somebody watching right now can give $1,000. To support the movement for souls, you have a need in your life right now. You need a breakthrough. God's saying, will you step out in faith? Will you sow? Because what you do for others, God will do for you. And I'm asking you to stand with us so that we can extend God's kingdom, so that we can preach the gospel. That's what it's all about. But right now, before we go, I want to pray for you. If you need a miracle in your life, let's pray together. If you need a breakthrough, let's pray. Touch wherever in your body that's hurting, that's sick. Let's agree over your family right now. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up those watching all around the world right now. And I speak to those broken homes and I say, be restored in the name of Jesus. Those broken relationships be made whole in Jesus' name. I rebuke you spirits of infirmity, you spirits of sickness, cancer, heart conditions, thyroid problems, you spirits of diabetes and illness. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and I command you now, be bound and go from their lives. I speak healing to your body right now. Those of you with broken backs, with knee conditions, somebody's ankle is being healed right now by the power of God. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to tendons, ligaments, joints right now, every cell and fiber of your being and I say be made whole I lose creative power in the name of Jesus be restored in Jesus name I speak to those watching who are struggling with addictions trying to be free I minister freedom right now be made whole be free in the name of Jesus you spirit of addiction you spirit of fear you spirit of torment I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Satan I command every assignment that you have formed against the children of God right now to be bound and go from them now in Jesus name and I decree victory over their life I decree breakthrough and freedom in Jesus name amen Amen. Well, just begin to praise him right where you're at. Begin to worship him. Begin to give him glory for who he is. And let me know what God's done in your life. Send me the testimony so that we can rejoice. Remember, we're going to be back here again next week, 
right here, same time, same place. Tell somebody about it. We are the resistance movement. We are extending God's kingdom. You're part of that movement. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. God bless. Your love casts away the darkness And your love casts away the shadows And your love leads me to repentance Your love is all I need So